My name's Chris Peranto. Call sign was Tonto. A lot of people know me by that now. <laughs> um, I was in the U.S. Army. I was with the 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment. As a kid growing up, you know, of course, God was a part of my life. Uh, so was the church. But when I was a kid. I, I didn't. I didn't want to be at church. I wanted to be outside playing, and I wanted to be, you know, out running around on Sundays, and not not in church. The guys that do that, we're journaling junkies. We like it. We like that feeling of always being up here. That's that, that sixth sense. It makes the world so much more beautiful when your adrenaline's always up here. Doing these deployments or, and going overseas and getting these firefights or, or just normal operations, crisis situations, we realize that there's life death situations. Get to Benghazi, a lot more dangerous. We were contracted directly for the CIA. The consulate had been attacked twice prior. It had been attacked with IEDs, improvised explosive devices on the exterior walls. What they were doing is they were seeing if there would be a response. And when we were told to not help on those attacks, that just emboldened them. They said, hey, well, look at this. We've blown up the consulate twice, no response. Ambassadors coming in. How do they know the ambassadors are coming in? The attack that night, it was, it was a planned attack. That morning before, they were doing reconnaissance, uh, taking pictures of the facility, taking pictures of the front gate. Being three quarters of a mile away, when the firing starts, it's like being downstairs. You're, you're going to be able to hear it, and you'll be able to see it. And South Sharia and Al Qaeda and the Maghreb had so much firepower. They could have initially just come in and just destroyed everything. Five minutes in, we were told to wait. Ten minutes in, that's where we were told to stand down by our chief of base. Imagine it's your friend or your family member, somebody that you swore that you would always go help, and they're on the radio. GRS, where are you? GRS, you, you swore you'd get here. GRS, we're under heavy fire. GRS, the consul's been overrun. We need you here now this stress that we're going through going, God, we gotta get over there. When we heard on the radio from Alec Henderson, and he said, if you don't get here, we're all gonna die. And it's just everybody's, the switch, it's like, the hell with this. We're, we're going. You could just, everybody's eyes, you just see it. Done, we're done listening, get in the car, let's go. And that was it. They're coming at us with small arms and RPGs and we could fight that all night until we ran out of ammo but they were gonna figure it out and come out with something bigger, like a technical, which is a truck with a heavy machine gun in the back, or mortars or rockets or something. At the consulate, we got attacked the second time. And I remember bullets flying. Yeah, and when bullets go by you, they snap, they crack, because it's a high velocity round and it goes by your head and it snaps, breaks the sand barrier. Started off with, I don't think we're gonna get any help up here. Nah, Spectre's not coming. No air support's not coming. Nobody's coming. When you do feel that down, you, you gotta have faith in God. And you gotta you gotta have faith in in the Lord. If I die on this battlefield today, may I die at peace with you. I remember I just took a knee and I started shooting back and I was out in the open, no cover. I feel safe when bulls start flying. And I said, as long as I'm doing the right thing, God will take care of me. And I knew God had me. You know, you feel it. And you feel that it does, it feels like a cocoon, a warm bubble that's around you. And you're, you're safe, you're good, nothing's gonna touch you. I've felt it where he's not been there. Doesn't matter, you just keep going. It's not that he's not there and he's not always watching, it's just sometimes you feel like there's that extra protection and it's not my time to die right now. And that's how I felt. That's when I really felt like God came into my life. My faith is 100 times stronger, and he's still there with us. He's always taking care of us.